Welcome. It is June 25th, 2021, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello and welcome back to uh, Thoughts from the Word. Uh, we're finishing out this week, closing up uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. Uh, I will be heading out uh, later today to head uh, towards General Assembly. General Assembly is uh, this next week in St. Louis. Uh, pray for the PCA and our General Assembly as we gather to meet to do the work of the church, but I will be there. Uh, and then we have some family uh, things to take care of that following week. So we'll be away for two weeks. Uh, we will not be having a, a thoughts from the word for, for two weeks. We'll return back after a, uh, the second Sunday of of the month of July, be back in normal, we get back into the routine and pick up in 1 Timothy chapter 2. But for today, let's finish up chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, turn there, 1 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to look at the second part of verse 19 and verse 20. They make up one sentence. So let's hear the word of the Lord. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith, among whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. Well, Paul is finishing up this charge to Timothy, and he ties back into the whole view of salvation by faith through Jesus Christ. Because of God's grace and mercy, he gave Christ for us and saved us. And he's encouraged Timothy in the previous uh, sentence to hold on to that faith. He's given him this charge to protect the church and he should hold on to this faith. But he says, now some have rejected this and made a shipwreck of their faith because they they rejected faith in Christ and think that they can do it themselves. They, they can do it through religion for whatever ways. And he includes two he, who he names by name, Hymenaeus and Alexander whom he says he gives over to Satan. He's, he's turned them over to, to Satan, realized that they've, they've fallen away, that they are not of God's children. They're being led by Satan until such time as they learn not to blaspheme. However, we know that the one unforgivable sin, according to Scripture, is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. He's turned them over to be sifted and to, to, to we pray, to be returned, restored to Jesus but uh, turn them over with an expectation that they probably will not, because as he says, they made a shipwreck of their faith. And oftentimes, particularly in that day when a ship uh, experienced a shipwreck, the entire ship was destroyed. And we can easily make a mess of our lives and shipwreck our lives by turning away from God in, uh, and turning away from the faith. We thus destroy what God has offered and given to us and, and destroy our lives. How many times have we seen that where somebody appears to be walking in the faith and then turns totally away and their life just shatters and, and falls to pieces? Timothy, he is told to fight the good warfare, to maintain that faith, to be consistent in it, to live in it each day, and to charge those who are not doing so to, to stop blaspheming. Why? Because they are leading others to, into shipwreck. You know, it's bad enough when one ship wrecks, but when that ship then leads everybody else in that direction, it, it is disastrous. And for the church, you cannot have that happen. And Paul is wanting Timothy to make sure that he ch charges these leaders to stop or leave, in this case, to be handed over to Satan in order to learn that they are in sin and they must repent and come by faith uh, to Christ. Do they? We don't know. Uh, we can surmise that they probably did not, but we know that if we, like Timothy, remain constant and fight the good fight, that we will not shipwreck, but will indeed land in the port called glory, and we will find our peace, and our hope there. Here's our reading today entitled, A Prayer for Dependence on the Spirit. Lord, may I be more and more under the rich influences and glorious outpourings of the Spirit, 
that I may be an able minister of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. I pray that you may always find an everlasting spring and an overflowing fountain within me, which may always make me faithful, constant, and abundant in your work. May I live daily under those inward teachings of the Spirit that enable me to speak from the heart to the heart, from the conscience to the conscience, and from experience to experience. Let me be burning and a shining light. I pray that everlasting arms may always uh, may be always under me, that while I live, I may be useful for your glory and your people's work, good, and that no discouragements may keep me from my work. And when my work is done, help me to give up my account with joy, not with grief. Amen. And that was written by Pastor Thomas Brooks. Let's close our time together in prayer. Almighty God, may we rest upon your spirit and find our faith increased, that we would not experience the shipwreck of faith that Hymenaeus and Alexander experienced, that we would be faithful and glorifying to you, that we would not become blasphemers. Keep us from turning away from you, O Lord. Increase our faith and make us to be the men and women of God you desire us to be. Father, as we head into this weekend and, and we gather to worship you this Sunday, I pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in us, that you would be exalted in us, and that our faith would be increased. Oh, Father, I pray that you would be at work in us, that you would make us to be the men and women of God you desire us to be, and, Lord, that you would set us forth on a course headed towards glory, that we might glorify you every step of the way. Father, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us this week. Again, I will see you in two weeks. May God bless you when we gather together in two weeks to hear some more thoughts from the Word.